This is John Carrington with Eye on Baltimore, and I'm here with Mr. Roswell Encina, who is the Director of Communications for the Enoch Pratt Free Library. Mr. Encina, you have a big job, so I'm going to applaud you right now. <laughs> oh, God. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, what are you doing to get the word out about what a wonderful place the Pratt is? The best thing is um, the Pratt Library and all libraries across the nation, we're such an easy sell. People don't realize that the that every great library, like the city of Baltimore, deserves a great library system. Um, and the Pratt Library, I'm glad, is delivering that. Um, they, people, we need to remind them the resources, or the free resources that's available here at the Pratt. I mean, we're not just, you know, concerning like, the books that everybody knows that we have, and the DVDs and the CDs. People know all about that. People need to realize that there's more to the library than, you know, what they know about, that they remember since they were a kid. Dr. Hayden usually says, it's not your grandmother's library anymore. But you know she's still welcome. <laughs> but you know we try to spread the word that you know there's e-books available. You know, if you have an iPad or you have a Kindle or you have a you know a, a Nook, you could download e-books from your on your gadget and you know and download like your then, then a Harry Potter book or whatever top seller book there is. And the best part of it is um, like after three weeks it will just disappear from your gadget, so you'll oh. never have to pay the fine. Or okay. and you also could renew it from there too. So you know we're embracing um, the future when mm -hmm. it comes to it. You know because the number one question we always get is what's going to happen to the library? You know in this era of e-books and e-readers and instead of us you know staying away from it, we decided to embrace it. We've interviewed you before, sir, and you made a lot of big promises. What have you done to follow up on those promises? Well, you know, we're very proud of all the work that we've done here at the Pratt Library. You know, several years ago, it was probably like maybe 2007, the last time we spoke, um, that's when, you know, it was like the dawn of social media happening, not only here in Baltimore, of course, but across the world. So since then, you know, we've been, it started off just with, with simple email blasts that everybody receives via email. Then, you know, we're a big we're big on social media now with Facebook and Twitter and Good. Flickr and Foursquare and all these <laughs> other things. Um, but um, we've discovered it is a, a new way to reaching out to our patrons. Um, we consider it like the next generation of our telephone reference system. Mm -hmm. um, aside from us tweeting and you know putting updates on Facebook of what's happening at the library, we, we want to engage with our patrons more. Mm -hmm. So we ask them like, ask us anything, you know, we, you know, um, ask us on Twitter, ask us on Facebook. We try to give them a response immediately. Mm -hmm. Another thing we like to do is like we try to ask our patrons, what are you reading now? So then let's say they tell us they're reading um, Fifty Shades of Grey, for say. Um, librarians will like, when you're done reading that book, you could read this book if, if that's what you're interested in. So um, we try to really be more engaging. Um, I know we, we're holding this title now that we're very proud of. Some librarian in Singapore compiled a list of the top um, influential libraries on Twitter around the world, and we came in at number six, which hey. I'm very proud about. You know, cause the first thank you. The first couple ones were you know the Library of Congress, obviously, and the New York Public Library, and some libraries in England. But you know, us holding up the number six spot kind of gave us a big pat on the back. Wow, that 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 is terrific. What? Is it that the uh, baby boomers who are at that age where they're retiring don't have more time to read? What is it that you um, uh, use to reach out to that particular target audience? Well, you know, now cause we discovered um, people tend to go to the library when they were little, when their parents brought them throughout middle school and high school and college, but they tend to stop after college and they don't come back until they have their own kids mm -hmm. and start that cycle all over again, which is a good thing, obviously. Mm -hmm. But there's that big gap there between you know their 20s, 30s, and maybe even early 40s of how do we get them back into the library. So you know we tried different ways, obviously, considering through social media, but that was that's also the genesis of our young professionals group, friends group called the Pratt Contemporaries, which their ultimate goal is to bring folks in their 20s and 30s back into the library and rediscover that there's more to the library than just books. You know, that's why the Pratt Contemporaries, they go through these 
very innovative program, mm -hmm. so trying to get these 20-somethings and 30-somethings back. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, they had their big gala, which is the black and white party. Every year there's a literary theme to it, but it's always black and white. Um, this year, it's the most successful one. It was sold out three weeks before the event. It's a pretty much a big dance party for these folks <laughs> in their 20s and 30s. <laughs> and the number one comment we get is when they walk in, say, gosh, I haven't been here since I was a kid, or I've never been in here. And we were like, what do you think this building's been doing now? <laughs> standing there? But they have other fun programs. Like, we had a trivia night. Um, we also have um, a series called Eat, Drink, and Read. Um, you know, we, we discovered, I have, I have to say, that the, you know, the key to getting these um, young folks back into the library is, you know, with some booze. <laughs> so, um, Do we 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 that out that there? it's fine. No, it's a truth. Um, but we tell them, you know, we, uh, uh, we partner with a lot of the restaurants and, yeah. um, and, and, mm -hmm. and folks in, in the city and bars. Like the first program, we partnered with Dogwood. Um, mm -hmm. He's very philanthropic and he's, he's very civic minded on, on how to help uh, give back to Baltimore. So, the, so the, the chef there was able to you know, do a cooking demonstration and talk about you know, how um, the library's impacted his life. The second was the bartender at BNO Brasserie. Okay. Uh, he's an award-winning mixologist. So he partnered uh, cocktails with, with books. Like say, if you're part of a book club, okay. you're reading this book, mm -hmm. here's a little cocktail you guys could be reading, uh -oh. drinking while you're reading that book. And the last one was uh, Volker Stewart, who owns Brewer's Art on Charles Street. He's also, he used to be a librarian. Mm -hmm. So he did beers and books. <laughs> okay. The same concept, you know. Here's, if, if, if it's winter time and you're uh -oh. reading this book, uh -oh. here's a uh, beer you could drink along with that too. Yeah. So we've been, you know, having some very gracious partners who's helped, you know, uh, they understand the goal of the library, and you know, it will will do anything innovative to hopefully get these folks back in here. Very creative. I got a hand it to you. I didn't think of beers and books. <laughs> We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back with more of I Own Baltimore. I'm nuts about downtown Baltimore's west side. Hello, I'm John Waters. And I'm proud to say that Baltimore has always been my home. It's the inspiration behind all my films, including Hairspray, Crybaby, Serial Mom, and A Dirty Sheen. Let me tell you, there are not a more eccentric, monumental, eclectic, intriguing, and character-filled 28 blocks anywhere in the world. And I'm here to prove it to you. This is where Babe Ruth was born. They tell me he's the best baseball player ever, not that I'd know. I'm more into theater. Like nearby Arena Players, the nation's longest continuously running African-American community theater. I'm also a big fan of century-old Antique Row, where New York dealers come to buy and later mark up their purchases sky-high for their Manhattan buyers. On that same block sits the UB Blake National Jazz Institute, housing memorabilia from Baltimore jazz greats like Billie Holiday and, of course, UB himself. The West Side is also where the Maryland Historical Society calls home, with its many Baltimore artifacts, including the original manuscript of the Star Spangled Banner and Nipper, the RCA dog. Oh, and the National Dentistry Museum, the only one of its kind in the U.S., is where George Washington's dentures live. And no, they were never wooden. And right in the middle of it all, as if just to add mystery and intrigue, sits the gravesite of Edgar Allan Poe, my kind of guy. Sometimes, I go there to meditate. Now, the thing that defines Baltimore for many people around the world is right here also, our sports franchises. The Orioles and the Ravens, two birds that nest in the West. The Walters Art Museum is also known internationally, featuring an interactive experience exploring 55 centuries of art. A man named Gustav Krug worked at an ironworks foundry on Saratoga Street on the west side way back in 1810, and it's still a working ironworks foundry today. Sixth generation Krugs still work here. In Baltimore, we find a good place, we like to stick with it. Now contrast that with one of the world's most advanced operating room facilities just a couple blocks away at the University of Maryland Medical System. Get ill, get fixed, have an operation in high style. Know of a place where the Beatles, Al Roker, Mother Teresa, and P.T. Barnum all hung out? I'll tell you, the west side of downtown Baltimore. Al Roker, he's done live shows at the world-famous Lexington Market, where you can shuck oysters and see some of the most amazing hairdos in town. The Beatles, Pavarotti, U2, you name them. They have played what used to be called the Civic Center, but is now called the first Mariner Arena. Aren't we grand? 
Mother Teresa, the Pope, and many presidents have all visited the Basilica of the Assumption, the first Roman Catholic cathedral in the United States. Photo ops, I assume. And as for P.T. Barnum, he, along with the likes of Cab Calloway, Chick Webb, Milton Berle, and a young, debuting Frank Sinatra, all performed at the world-famous Hippodrome Theater, one of the true cornerstones of the West Side. I saw Cleopatra there, and even shot parts of Cecil B. Demented outside before they fixed it up. The real story today, however, is how all that energy is coming back to the West Side, bigger, smarter, more fragrant, and more exciting than ever before. Major traveling Broadway shows like Phantom of the Opera and Disney's The Lion King, as well as events such as Russell Simmons' Deaf Poetry Jam and local community events now perform in Baltimore for the first time thanks to the Hippodrome Theater at the Franz Merrick Performing Arts Center. The world-renowned University of Maryland has broken ground on a state-of-the-art biopark that puts the west side on the global map as a major biotechnology hub. The Stewart's Building, once a thriving department store, is the very definition of an environmental-friendly green building. And don't let the facade fool you. This office and retail space is wired with the most high-tech, broadband, infrastructure technology imaginable and a luxury apartment building known as the Atrium at Market Center even has a direct connection to the university's main network. There are so many ongoing projects like Market Center West residential units, University of Maryland housing, plus an important redevelopment of an area called the Superblock, where local small business owners have been invited to partner with public and private entities to upgrade their properties. Everyone playing a role in the renaissance of the West Side. Many major players have come to bat in this more than $1 billion revitalization of downtown's West Side, like Bank of America, who believes so much in this endeavor that it bought an entire city block to renovate and erect a mixed-use development called Centerpoint, offering nearly 400 residential units and 35,000 square feet of retail space. It's the total commitment of Governor Robert Ehrlich, Mayor Martin O'Malley, and all the legislators, along with the Baltimore Development Corporation and the 40-plus members of West Side Renaissance, led by Peter Angelos, that are ensuring the success of what the New York Times calls the largest revitalization plan of its kind in the country. And it's all happening in this one neighborhood called Downtown Baltimore's West Side. Infectious, fashionable, Full of vim and Baltimore vigor, I walk the west side streets these days in amazement at what it's become. I'm nuts about downtown Baltimore's west side. You will be, too. I'm John Carrington, and I'm talking to Mr. Roswell Encina, and he's Director of Communications for the Enoch Pratt Library. And I just want to ask you about your special programs. Um, uh, Get Loose with Mother Goose. And it's called Mother Goose Baby Steps. Oh, whatever. It's a very interactive <laughs> kind of story time for you know, toddlers. Uh -huh. uh, it's, people love it. There's some um, mothers and fathers and, you know, and, and nannies and babysitters bring the little ones to not only here to the Central Library because it's going on at all our 21 locations. Mm -hmm. And they look forward to it. They find their favorite library who, love, who they love. They usually, usually if they know they're not that library, it's not going to be at that branch. They'll even follow them to the other branches. But I could guarantee that all our Pratt staff, they're very good at what they do. <laughs> so you could go to any Pratt location and all the kids love it. As for teens, um, it's amazing. And I still discover this of the programs that we um, have for teens. You know, we have the usual teen programs, you know, like, you know, storytelling. But there, we have more innovative ones, like, you know, we, the, the video game. We have we, went, we, we have we Wednesdays at certain branches where, you know, we invite the kids to come over. You know, it's better to play in a safe environment like a library and they can play the video game, you know, the Wii game. And we have other fun little programs for teens, like from acting workshops to songwriting workshops, and they're all free, and that we couldn't stress that enough. All righty. Uh, any other special programs? Do you have anything for uh, baby boomers? Oh, yes. You know, I'm a, and not that I'm saying that baby boomers are aging, but you know, we do have a lot of <laughs> programs, you know, that, cause that is the number one question we do mm -hmm. get, is like how, uh, how, anything about health-related issues, from diabetes, obviously, to, to, um, to heart disease. But, you know, we have those available for them. We have a special partnership with health department and other um, nonprofits and other institutions in, in the city that helps them, you know, maneuver through these little issues. And, you know, it's tax season as well. We partnered with Baltimore Cash, who helps folks 
who are actually at the, at the Central Library regularly to help people with their taxes for free as well. All right, what is your most popular service? Um, I believe, you know, right now, yeah. it's the computers. Um, oh. um, if you see, and it's not only here at the Central Library, go to any branch, there are a line of people waiting to rush in to get on the computer system. It's very sobering. Um, we re somebody, uh, there was a study done several years ago, and it, 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 it said something like between 30 and 40 percent of Baltimorean, Baltimoreans um, have no computer access at home. I mean, when most of us can you know, just whip out our phone or whip out our tablets, um, can check our email that way, there's still a huge part of the population of the city that still depend on the Pratt Library just to check email, just to check their you know, Facebook status update. Um, so we're glad that you know to help. We're here to help them on that. Um, it's amazing to see how many people still walk in and you know the, the simple task of just checking their email. They have to come to the library for. Well, that's vital. I mean, uh, what the median income for Baltimore City is fifty-six thousand dollars, and uh, actually, 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 the um, the average uh, income for Baltimore City is about fifty-six thousand, but the median in income where yeah, the average person falls about thirty six thousand. So the money's not there, the resources are not there to maybe have the home computing. And we're glad, you know, that we're here that we could help them. You know, they don't have to come to the Central Library. Mm -hmm. They could go to our Pennsylvania Avenue branch or our mm -hmm. Clifton branch. They all have these. Um, you know, one thing is, especially when you're applying for a job nowadays, mm -hmm. most of them, you know, you have to do it online. Mm -hmm. um, so from you know, from McDonald's to McDonald Douglas, mm -hmm. you actually have to come and do it on a computer. But if you don't have a computer at home, what do you do? So we encourage them to come here. And not only will we provide you with a computer, obviously, mm -hmm. but we'll provide you with staff members that can help you. Like, if you have questions on how to type up your resume, mm -hmm. they're there. Well, if somebody uh, needed access to a computer, uh, there is a number on the screen Definitely. that can be used for that purpose. They can call that number or you know, check out our website at prattlibrary.org. All right, please repeat that. Um, it's just www.prattlibrary.org. It will have all the information about the Pratt Library, including you know locations and times. Okay, so if you need information, you can call the number that's on the screen or go on the website, and you'll get the uh, extra information that'll help you to gain access to the computers at the Enoch Pratt Library. I'm curious. Uh, you look like you're from Baltimore, but <laughs> again, <laughs> there's always that chance that you're not. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Virginia's home, but I consider you know Baltimore as my adopted home now. Um, I'm very proud of the city of Baltimore the state of Maryland everything is we love it so much now you know I'm rooting for the for the Ravens and the Orioles like uh, actually during the Super Bowl um, the Pratt Library and the San Francisco Public Library we had a Sam, uh, Super Bowl bet um, oh. like whoever won they had to uh, do something so this is what we decided on if the Ravens won the which we did obviously the city librarian or their, their director um, had to wear a Ravens jersey and recite the Raven <laughs> in the atrium of their main in their main library so they were very gracious. They were very good sports about it. They did. Not only did he do it in the Ravens jersey, he read the Raven, then staff members started coming in. Before um, it was all said and done, there were probably like 20 of them there reciting the, po the Raven along with them. So they were really good sports. If we lost, we were very confident that that was not going to happen. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Hayden had to wear a 49ers jersey as well and recite a poem about San Francisco in the main hall of the Central Library. Okay, well... That's wonderful that we won. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> More publicity for Baltimore. <laughs> and yeah, they were very good sports about it. Um, and they're even going to send us the jersey that their city librarian wore, and hopefully we can auction it off. And you know. Okay. Can we get some of the Ravens coming down to this to the uh, uh, library? They, actually, the, the between the Ravens and uh, the Ravens players and the Orioles players have been so they've been great partners to us as well. We have this ongoing campaign we call Get Carded, where we get local celebrities sold this ginormous library card. Mm -hmm. So um, the folks at the Ravens even you know, had Ray Rice hold it, Joe Flacco hold it, um, with Orioles they had you know, Adam Jones hold it, mm -hmm. and even Kyle Ripken Jr. held it. So it's, it, these folks have all been great supporters of the Pratt Library. Okay, if you get Jacoby Jones to hold it, I think we've pretty much got the people who are exactly. the key <laughs> people. <laughs> Ho hopefully it'll be the next one. All right, uh, your funniest moment. Oh. Oh, you know, there's a lot of fun moments going on here. Um, there was one time um, we had we did a program with the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Baby Circus. Uh, they were probably, you know had a little program for the kids downstairs. So they, they you know they forced me to play along with the clowns and stuff. So <laughs> the kids got a good kick out of it. <laughs> were you the butt of the joke? Of course. You know. <laughs> They really clowned around, didn't they? They did, you know, but it was all for fun, you know. I, uh -huh. Anything, you know, to, you know, to 
give a laugh to the kids who come here. Okay, any final thoughts? Um, you know, just like as we were talking about, you know, if Ray Rice or Joe Flacco could get a library card, you can too. Get carded. All right. If a clown can have a card, you can have one too, folks. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what do you want Baltimore to know about you? Well, you know, that I hopefully every time you see me, you, um, you see my face and you think of the Pratt Library at the same time. Then that happens. It's funny thing is, despite, I, I may mean, joke about that, people will see me on the street, oh, you're the guy who works at the library. Like, mm -hmm. it's like who knew I'd be recognized uh, for that? So yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more of I Own Baltimore. Welcome back to Eye on Baltimore. I'm John Carrington, and I have the pleasure of talking with Mr. Roswell Encina, who is the uh, Director of Public Relations uh, and Communications with the Enoch Pratt Free Library. Uh, Mr. Encina, uh, you have 
uh, some snail mail that you still send out. Uh, you have a monthly newsletter. Uh, talk about that. It's called our Compass. Um, it comes out every two months. Uh, it pretty much highlights all the programs coming to the Pratt Library. So it tells you, you know, what our Writer's Live series are, our adult programming, our children's programming, our teen programming. So people still get that in the mail. If you have a library card, you should be receiving one. But you know, we, we, we respect that you know, people want to be more paperless. So we're telling folks, if you want to opt out of that, you could get an email version of it, or you know, we'll send you a downloadable version that you could just you know, check out online. But it's been very beneficial. I mean, you know, we've, gone through, we've gone through so many of our kind of ways of trying to promote the library. And I think um, even back in the day when the Central Library you know, was built in the early 30s, promotion was already kind of like the number one um, kind of objective. If you notice, if you walk into the Central Library, we have those Cathedral Street windows, which look like department store windows. Um, and that was the point of it, you know, try to promote what's happening at the library, try to promote, you know, try to be more uh, partnering with the folks who are your neighbors and other nonprofits and other institutions in the city and help uh, promote Baltimore that way too. And if, you, if you've also realized that the central library is um, one level, like, like if you go to other big main libraries in the country, like the New York Public Library or the Philadelphia Free Library, there's these um, kind of grand steps to, to walk into the front door. The purpose of this library, uh, the central library, to make sure it's on the first level, so it's, it feels more inviting. So it's not intimidating for the for the average person to be like, I don't want to walk in there because I've got, you know, they don't want to be so intimidated by the, you know, the knowledge and the intellect in it. But when our ultimate goal is to get people in and you know use us and all the resources that's available for them. Like, what can our viewers do to help you get the word out? Oh, uh, you know, just please tell everyone that you know there's more to the Pratt Library that what you remember. You know, we're more than just books. You know, there's award-winning authors that come here uh, regularly almost once a week and you know, aside from that there's free programs you know from computer training to how to help you search a job and all these other fun programs you may not even expect is happening at your local Pratt library okay how long have you been here I've been here I'm turning six years this March so yeah. time flies when you're oh. having fun and yeah. I should say you know, through that six years it's been an amazing, I, I can't even imagine all the, I, I, I can't, uh, I, I'm just still bewildered of all the people I've met through this job, you know, from the president to the vice president to, um, to Chris Matthews, you know, it's, it's been an amazing journey. Right, well, what has truly been the highlight for you? Oh, definitely, um, several years ago, it's, it's also a sad story, um, Senator Paul Sarbanes' wife, Christine Sarbanes, was um, on our board. Um, she passed away. But uh, just to show you how gracious the Sarbanes family is towards the Pratt, she wanted her public memorial service to be held in the main hall of the library. They, obviously, the family had a private service, but that big service was when um, everybody from Washington was coming. Um, we had senators from John Kerry to Vice President Biden here. Uh, the president couldn't be here that time. Um, but um, it was one of those things we had to figure out how to seat everyone because we had governors and ambassadors and senators and congressmen all coming. Um, despite, despite such a sad occasion celebrating the life of Christine Sarbanes, it was such a, an amazing time. That's when you realize how, you know, the, how important it is to everyone. Well, in the next five years, how will the communications department at the Enoch Pratt Free Library change? We're hoping it changes like uh, how libraries are changing as well. You know, when I took this job six years ago, you know, we were kind of you know, playing along just with you know Twitter and Facebook, mm -hmm. but now it's a major part of our you know our plan of promoting the library system. So who knows what happens in five years? It's obviously going to be more digital and more electronic, but hopefully um, you know w we could keep up and people could keep up too. All righty. Uh, well, is there anything currently going on now that we need to know about? We're very excited. You know, we're very always proud of our Writers Live series. Um, uh, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor is going to be here on February 28th, which is obviously just a huge get for us. We're you know, expecting hundreds and hundreds of people here. Our big, you know, it's a good problem to have. We're nervous that we may have to turn people away because of the fire code of this building, obviously. But, um, but you know, all these other programs, not only for adults, but you know, for, for children and teens. And, and in April is our fairy tale festival that we have a month-long celebration for kids. You, know, you can't go anywhere else in the city and do all those free programs for free. And you know, there's stuff going on all the time, too. All righty, um, and of course, uh, we always need advice on visiting the library for the first time. Absolutely. What advice do you have? Just come on in and get your library card. Get carded, as we say. Well, I want to thank you for giving us this interview, and I want to thank uh, you for watching Eye on Baltimore. I'm John Carrington, and this here is Mr. Roswell Cena, <laughs> and he is the Com Director of Communications for the Enoch Pratt Free Library. I want to thank you for being a part of the show, and let's say goodbye to all those folks Sorry. who have their eye on Baltimore. Bye-bye. <laughs>